Greetings, beautiful earthlings. My name is Star. If you are new here, I don't know how you found me, but I am super glad you did. And if you are returning, y'all, the real MVP, you already know. So as you guys might notice, I do have a couple of changes here today going forward. I have a new background. I'm very excited about this. I was having lots of issues with the Psychic Readings background, and I feel like now you guys can see me a little bit better as well. So I also do have a little microphone here. Hopefully this helps you guys because I have noticed and other people have noticed that it's very hard to hear me on my videos because I was constantly overexerting my voice so that the phone microphone would pick it up. So I finally just had to do some extra readings to get all of this situated. So I hope that helps you guys a little bit and it's not as distracting. So I'm actually not going to be able to be drinking anymore on camera, which is so upsetting because you guys know I am like all about my coffee and my water when I'm uh, filming. So uh, you guys could hear me drinking before and now you're really gonna hear it. So I gotta be really conscious not to do that anymore. So let's go ahead and just swiftly move forward. So I actually had a little announcement for you guys. You remember we were using my Centennial Smithwaite Enigma um, to be doing these card of the day pulls, but um, Enigma got a little bit stressed out, got really tired, lots of energy, lots of eyes, and he just uh, wasn't feeling it anymore. So we actually have Joe here now who decided to take over the series considering I initially wanted to start with Joe. I'm very excited. So I will be changing this in the description box. So it will be now the um, Radiant Rider weight in a tin as well as my Radiant um, review video there in the description box instead of the Centennial. So we are going to keep it this way moving forward. I did have a little discussion with both of them and tell them we got to do it for continuity's sake. If we're switching, we're not switching back. So we're using this one. I'm very excited because the colors of the Radiant are a lot more vibrant. You can see all of those uh, details a lot easier. Plus you've got the border here with the name. So that border does make it a little bit harder on us because it makes the card smaller, but I am very, very excited because that color change is going to help a whole lot with you guys being able to see the details in there. I was looking through the previous cards that we just did in the Radiant and they look so much better. I wish we had started with this, but I just wanted to be respectful of Joe's wishes not to be on YouTube anymore, but he does want to be a teaching deck. So I've started writing all the keywords in the borders of the other cards we have already done and he is going to be our teacher. So I'm so excited to have Joe here, you guys. You don't even know how much this means to me that Joe is willing to jump into this series now. So let's go ahead and go forward with the Hermit today. So the keywords for the Hermit up right here, we've got contemplation, search for truth, and inner guidance. And the reversed keywords are loneliness, isolation, and losing your way. So I think it's really important to see what this little chunk of info here is at the top part of this card. So it says, it is oversimplistic to limit the significance of the hermit to his being a symbol for isolation or forlorn loneliness. He has more to tell us, something which is of special importance to you. The hermit is one who deals with his problems when the time is ripe and without trying to avoid the issue. So the only time that I go out of my way to talk about the hermit as a card of loneliness is when it is reversed because that is what it means reversed. But um, for the most part, he's a very introspective, uh, searching for answers, searching for truth kind of person. So um, don't let the hermit the name the hermit confuse you guys into thinking that this card just signifies loneliness because that is not true upright. So the if you get the hermit here in a spiritual reading, that means an independent to and with God. If you get this as the card for the day, it means sometimes this card signals that it is time to withdraw. But more often, it gives us a hint to make calm but steady efforts to throw off unimportant balances. Oh, sorry, unimportant ballast and concentrate on the essentials. And if you get the Hermit in a love reading, it means a good card for addressing existing problems and getting them sorted out. So if you get the Hermit in a success and happiness reading, it means in your current situation, go for solutions that bring lasting results. Don't put things off until tomorrow. 
start tackling the issues today. So I do love the Hermit. Um, I really love seeing different renditions of the Hermit across different uh, new modern decks. The Hermit is one of my favorite cards for sure. Um, they just do such beautiful renditions of it now when you see them in modern decks. It's so beautiful. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the symbols in this card. And there actually aren't too many symbols in this card. If you look at it, it's a very simplistic card, right? It's a dude with a cane and a lantern. There's not too much there like the other Rider Waite cards we have seen. So the first one here, very easy, the figure's position and pose. So it says, his gaze is directed both inwards and outwards. His attention may be directed here or elsewhere. His hue is gray, but he himself brings light and color. His old beard is an old man's, but the snow symbolizes newness and virginity. Weird. <laughs> okay, so the next symbol we've got here, which actually is going to be um, for two of these definitions, is the lantern that he is holding here. So the first one for the lantern, it says, traditionally an ambivalent symbol. On the one hand, the night watchman stands for vigilance in the dark hours. On the other hand, he is associated with sleepiness and inactivity during the day. So the second one for the night watchman uh, lantern is in the biblical parable of the wise and foolish virgins, only the wise virgins remember to take extra oil for their lamps. They are prepared for the arrival of the bridegroom. So the next one we have here is the six pointed star that is inside of that lantern. Let's see if you'll focus there. Come on. I think you guys can see it even without the focus. There is a six pointed star inside of the lantern there. So this says the hexagram, the star of David, which today forms part of Israel's national flag. Here, however, it has no political connotations, but is a sign of the conjunction of two triangles, heaven and earth, the divine light within us. The next one is the golden yellow stave, and that's his little staff that he's got there. So stave is also another word for wands in this um, <laughs> in this book. I don't know if that's like an old timey term, stave. I've never heard that one, but stave also means one, but it says walking stick. Yes. <laughs> So the golden yellow stave, the light coming from the lantern determines the color of the stave. And this light is the light and strength which every person brings into the world with his or her individual personality. So the next one, I don't even need to point to it, his gray clothing, his cloak is gray. It says this color or its absence warns against uncertainty, the lack of personal development. It gives an impulse to be more objective while recognizing that one's own light and path, or the stave, are more important than the outer flamboyance. The next one here, sorry my arm's getting tired, <laughs> is the, ooh, it says green gray sky. However, in the radiant, it is a blue sky. See, these things are very important. That's kind of why I wanted to stick to the centennial because it was that traditional imagery. It was going to be more traditional than the radiant because the radiant is more modern. They have bumped up those colors. So keep in mind if you guys have an original radiant, uh, an original rider weight like the mini that I have, um, it will also be the same imagery in the giant or normal rider weight as well as the centennial. You will have a green gray sky. However, in the newer renditions such as the radiant and the universal, you might have a color like this, which is a blue sky. So just stay with me here. I know it's not gray, but we're going to talk about it like it's gray. <laughs> So together with the gray garment, the color of the sky also expresses withdrawal from outside distraction and concentration on what is essential. One's own light and the golden stave, the divine spark. So the next one is his white beard. Let's get all up in there. Hey, beard white, see? There you go, white beard. I know that doesn't focus because it's not a camera, so you guys got to look at it. I'm sorry, I see these <laughs> when I watch them back and I'm just like, oh, that doesn't focus. I feel so bad. 
So his white beard, it says, the beard has a long tradition as a symbol of potency. Sometimes, too, it is an expression of disguise, of hiding behind a self-wrought thicket. The white beard equals wisdom of age, fulfillment, and a fresh start, i.e. snow. So, that brings us to the snow, which is all this stuff down here. Oops. I thought that was water, y'all, to be honest. For the longest time, I was like, he's standing on a wave. No, he's not standing on a wave. That's snow. So, to have forgotten a part of oneself, or even to have let it freeze over, or snow as a metaphor, like the sheet of white paper, for, for, for fulfillment <laughs> and a new beginning, the sign that one has successfully dealt with the problem. Oh, excuse me. So, the next one is position of the figure. Really, again, they start with the position, they end with the position. All right. So, as the white snow is an image for healing the earth and, and, blah, 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 and revering it, <laughs> so does the raised position on a knoll stand for the vantage point from which one can review one's life and make peace with oneself, with God, and with all. So, I really hope you guys retain some of that. I don't think the Hermit is too hard of a card to understand, um, but like I had said in the Hierophant video and the Lovers video, um, sometimes you just don't resonate with a card so you don't quite understand it. I'm trying so hard not to fidget, you guys don't even understand because I know this microphone is going to pick up everything that I do and I do a lot of fidgeting <laughs> when you guys can't see it. So. <laughs> I am so excited to be moving forward with this new background. It looks so good. I'm so happy. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you made it to the end, give me a big thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, that's cool. Thumbs down. You don't have to like my video. And just so you guys know, I know I have been forgetting to say this in the card of the day videos because I kind of just get carried away with film one after the other, after the other, after the other, and I don't think to say it. But my socials are always in the description box for you guys, as always, with every other video. So if you are not following me already on Facebook and Instagram, Facebook is where you can book a reading with me, and Instagram is where you get all the spoilers and the fun stuff. However, I have now made a Twitter. I'm not proud of it, but I feel like I need to expand my platform a little bit. I know Twitter is where all the young people are. That's where all the drama is. I don't want to do it. But I'm going to try to start taking time to posting my videos there, following some tarot pages, some tarot people, try to be interactive on Twitter. I haven't really done much with, with it since I started it. So um, I did link that Twitter in the description as well as Snapchat. I do have a Snapchat and I was thinking of starting to do random one to three card polls on there if I get enough people interested in following me on Snapchat. So I do have a lot of good stuff going on on my Instagram, lots of things I like to ask you guys and no one really responds to them, but people like them. So if you guys could help me out with some of those things, responding would be super helpful, super appreciated. I do have some merch ideas I would like to run by you guys and I don't want to go forward with it if no one is interested. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day wherever you are when this video reaches you, my friends. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Namaste.